problems with schools and private language centers. My teaching experiences convinced me that something is wrong with English education. Everywhere I went, it was the same situation. The students were bored, frustrated, stressed, and nervous. Most students, even after years of studying English, fail to speak the language fluently. You are not alone, actually, because it's a kind of a global problem. Most of the students felt that learning English was boring and stressful, and speaking English was even worse. And in fact, the thought of speaking to a native speaker immediately made them feel extremely nervous and shy. They actually had developed a psychological problem with English and had named it English trauma. You know that a trauma is a deep wound or injury. How sad I thought to myself that so many people now think of English as a kind of injury or mental disease. Throughout my teaching career, I've met many students who had similar feelings about English. I discovered that those people were not alone. Rather, English trauma is a global epidemic. Though most people feel they must learn to speak English, very few seem to enjoy it. Most who learn the language struggle with the same feelings of nervousness and frustration. As I encountered this problem more and more, I began to look what the root causes. I realized that before I found a solution, I needed to understand the problem. Just as a doctor must find diagnose a disease first before treating it. Think about it like, what is the causes of all this misery and failure? Why do so many people fail to speak English effortlessly despite years of study? What is wrong with English education? The first and most obvious problem I found with schools was the, the way which they teach English. Most schools, the private language courses, everywhere in the world, they use primarily grammar translation method. As the name implies, the focus of this method is on grammar analysis and the memorization of translated vocabulary. This method breaks English into like endless series of grammar formulas to memorize. And of course, each grammar formula has exceptions and this must be memorized too. The schools like the grammar translation method because it appears to be serious, academic and complex. The grammar translation method uh, fits the way schools teach more subjects with textbooks, um, lectures, you know, notes, memorization and tests. The only problem, as you know, that is it doesn't work. In real conversations, there simply is no time to think about grammar formulas and their exceptions. The failure rate for this method, therefore, is absolutely horrible. Despite the failure of most students to speak English fluently, schools and these language courses continue to use this method. This is kind of an epic failure of our education system. Recently, because students find the grammar translation method so boring, some schools and the language courses have added some communication activities to their curriculum. Occasionally, like the teacher puts the students into peers and groups, the students then read or repeat dialogues from a textbook. Sometimes they might answer um, a few questions from a worksheet. Of course, these activities are unnatural. Nothing like real English conversation. And consequently, the failure rate of these communication activities is just as bad as grammar translation. Obviously, the English teaching methods used in schools do not work. That was easy to see. I know it, the students know it, the many teachers know it too, though a very few will admit it. 
However, as I continued to investigate the problem with schools and this private language courses, I found even deeper problems in the education system. These problems are less obvious, but in many ways far more damaging to the students. And I call these problems um, the hidden curriculum because they are the hidden lessons taught by schools. But what is a hidden curriculum? Most schools, like everywhere in the world, they share a similar hidden curriculum. One element of this curriculum is that the student passivity. In school, students are trained to be passive, not active. They sit in the chairs, in rows. When they are young, they are told to be quiet and obey the teacher. As the teacher lectures, students take notes. Later, they are told to memorize these notes in preparation for a test. So the message is clear, subconscious mes message. Learning is a passive activity. So you listen to the teacher, you take notes, and you memorize the notes. The problem is that the speaking English is not a passive activity, right? So you must connect with other people. You must constantly ask and answer questions. You must communicate ideas, emotions, descriptions. You must be ready for the unexpected. You must be spontaneous. You must actively interact. English is not something you passively study. It's something you do. And related to the problem of the the passivity is the issue of the energy. Sitting for a long time is a low energy activity, right? The longer you sit, the more your energy drops. And as your energy drops, so does your concentration. What's even worse, we know that some learners need physical movement in order to learn effectively. These people are called kinesthetic learners. The truth is, we are all kinesthetic learners to some degree because we all benefit from physical movement. But schools stick us in chairs and drain our energy. And how, what happens eventually? An in, inactive body leads to an inactive mind. The other greatest flaws of the school education is the idea of one right answer. One right answer is a powerful part of the hidden curriculum. It's the result of using textbooks and tests. In school you are frequently taught that there is one and only one correct answer to a question or a problem. For example, you might be asked to choose the correct verb tense on a test or you may be taught proper English greetings. The hidden message is that the teacher's way is always right. These students have never been trained to believe that there is only one correct way to say things in English. The truth is there are always that many ways to say the same thing. We can change, you know, like verb tenses in order to change the feelings of the story. We can use a different vocabulary different uh, phrases and you know what we, we even can break grammar rules all the time so one right answer thinking it just limits and confuse English learners effective communication requires flexibility while the one right answer mentality we can say trains students to be rigid and unimaginative and connected to this problem is is Another dangerous part of the hidden curriculum, I can say, is that the fear of mistakes. This is one of the most negative and traumatizing messages taught in schools. But how is the fear of mistake taught? In nearly every school all over the world, teachers regularly give quizzes and tests. The teacher asks questions and the students must provide um, the one right answer. Of course, the one right answer is always the teacher's answer. 
But what happens if the students provides a different answer? They are punished with a lawyer score. Students are smart and they quickly understand that in school mistakes are bad and must be avoided. They also understand that truth is unimportant and the best way to succeed is to simply give the answer that the teacher wants. Even worse is when a student is already feeling nervous tries to speak English with the, uh, you know, like whole class listening. And of course, they are they're just learning. So of course, they will make mistakes. When the teacher corrects these mistakes, the student is embarrassed and becomes even more nervous. And eventually what happens? Most students try to avoid speaking English because the situation is so painful. You know what, like by punishing and uh, correcting mistakes, school just punish risk taking. Little by little, they train students to avoid risk and avoid doing anything they can do perfectly. It, there is no perfection with English speaking, right? Even native speakers, look at them, they make mistakes. They make grammar mistake. They mispronounce words. They forget vocabulary words. It doesn't matter because all they, they care, they are just focused on the communicating, not on tests and grades. And of course, the, the fear of mistakes, I think that goes far beyond English classes. After years of school, most people learn to avoid risk in most part of their life because school trains them to be passive, rigid, timid, and obedient. This not only hurts your English speaking, it also harms your career, limits your success in all areas of your life. So those who are active, flexible, and passionate are the ones who achieve the greatest success in life. The passive and obedient rarely live their dreams. So guys, of course, you will make any mistakes as you improve your English speaking. There is no need to be upset by this. The truth is, most native speakers do not care. They do not care if you make the grammar mistakes. They just want to communicate with you. They want to share your, your um, um, thoughts, their thoughts actually, ideas and feelings. They want to communicate with you as a, as a human being not as an English student. So to co communicate effectively, you must forget the idea of perfection and learn to be flexible. See you next time. Bye.